So excited. Thank you for inviting me. What a wonderful service. You are so privileged uh, week after week to, to have that sort of fellowship. Uh, I, I love it. It was amazing. And I'm particularly excited to be here on your 24th anniversary uh, today. I love this church. Uh, I, I love your pastors. Uh, yeah, I, that's worth a cheer. Yeah, I love your pastors. Come on. Yay. Wanna. And you know, there's only one church in Hong Kong. It's not Lighthouse, it's not the Vine Church, it's the Church of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, and I bring greetings to you uh, from, from the Vine Church and from Pastor Andrew this morning. Uh, they've been praying about us this morning, they've been praying for you this morning. And as Rene told you, um, Sandra and I have been uh, involved here for the whole 24 years. Uh, I was just actually remarking this morning that uh, Stephen's, Jennifer's dad, you know, uh, I remember coming here to this wonderful presentation on Revelation, the book of Revelation, and uh, I don't think I've seen anything quite like it since, and I'm probably not likely to. But I come here this morning because I need to tell you something. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of Lighthouse Church and what you've done here in 24 years. But, but I've got a problem. Jennifer, Rene, this is my first invitation to speak here. <laughs> it's taken me 24 years to get an invitation. On the current rate, book me in for your 48th anniversary in 2039 if Jesus hasn't come before that. My intention today is quite simple. My intention today is to share my heart for you. And I want to also uh, really build on the teaching that you've been receiving over the last few weeks on the book of Psalms. And what I've done this morning, I've chosen Psalm 92. And because of the time we have available, uh, I'm just going to concentrate on four verses. If you have your Bible, Psalm 92, verses 12 to 15, I've put them on the screen Anyway, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. Amen. Amen. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no wickedness in him. As I said, my intention today is to share my heart for you. And my heart for you is, is simple. It could be summarized in two things. Number one, that you would be planted. And number two, that you would flourish. And the psalmist helps us to look at what it is to be firstly planted and secondly to flourish by giving us a picture of two wonderful trees. The psalmist said, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. The psalmist chooses the examples of firstly a palm tree and secondly a cedar tree to set the backdrop for our planting and flourishing. And what I want to do this morning is to look at these two trees, one at a time. I guess we're all aware of palm trees. Many of us come from the Philippines or warmer countries. They are one of the most well-known and widely planted tree families. They grow in hot climates. In fact, we have a very small palm tree in our home in Tun Mun. But what can we learn from a palm tree. Actually, we can learn a lot from a palm tree. And the first thing we can learn is that palm trees actually break the bands around them. Now, what happens is when a tree is growing, the tree grower will often put a band around the tree. Other trees do not break the bands that are put around them. In fact, what happens is as they grow, the bands dig into the wood. But the palm tree actually breaks the bands as it grows. And church, that's a wonderful picture for us. The child of God 
can claim and have victory through Christ. We just sang about it. We do not have to continue in sin. We do not need to be oppressed. We do not have to live under a curse. We are more than conquerors. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Number one, the palm tree breaks the bands. Number two, the palm tree will bend, but it won't break. You know, we've seen some of the typhoons that we've had in the Philippines. I always have the picture of Hawaii when I think of palm trees. You know, when we had Hurricane Andrew a couple of years ago, you know, the, the trees were almost at a 90 degree angle in the wind. But they didn't break. I'll be honest with you, the storms of life are a major pain in the butt. Right? I am sure that there are many of us here today who are going through major storms in our lives. But I need to tell you now, they cannot break us. In fact, I want to speak over the storms that are going on in our lives and in the world today. And say in Jesus' name, those things, I'm not making light of the things you're going through. And I know in some cases, they're really bad. I declare in Jesus' name that the storms of life will not break us because we are a palm tree. Thirdly, the palm tree not only survives, but flourishes in the desert. You know, a palm tree doesn't just grow in the desert. It flourishes. We can make it in this desert world. I'll come back to that later. Four, and I like this. I like this. I just sense this is a word for you as a body today. I, 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 I just really, I, I, I'm just so excited about this body of Christ, a group of palm trees together form an oasis. One palm tree standing alone will not provide much shade from the burning sun. A group of palm trees form an oasis. The oasis provides shade and rest for the weary traveler. Now often in the desert what you'll find is you'll find orange trees and lemon trees growing beneath the shades of palm trees grow together. When we group ourselves in the church, we provide shade for those who are weaker than ourselves. I love this. There's no room for lone rangers in the church. Send the lone ranger back off to Tonto. <laughs> but together, we form that oasis. Next, a palm tree can withstand abuse. You know, the heart of an ordinary tree is dead. The vulnerable area of, a, of an ordinary tree is on the outside. But the heart of the palm tree is alive. The life of the palm tree is on the inside. In the same way, the life of a child of God is within. Jennifer, I love what you shared about your parents because... The Bible says, though our outward man perishes, our inward man is being renewed every day. I say amen to that. Amen. Number six, I love this one. The older the tree, the sweeter the fruit. <laughs> now look, 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 look. I'm 62. I, I, I know it's hard to believe, right? 
right? You know, you know. I know I don't look a day over 61, but uh, I'm 62, and I love this. As a palm tree gets older, its fruit should become sweeter. There's no room for grumpy old men in the church, right? As Christians grow older, we should get sweeter. Now, this is quite interesting. They say that the older trees with the scarred trunks produce the sweetest fruit. I don't know about you, I've got, I've got a few scars. <laughs> the scars of life produce a fruit of holiness. The trials of life conform us to the image of Christ. Number seven, the palm tree cannot be grafted. You know, to graft a palm tree is to kill it. A palm tree is distinctive and unusual. That's why grafting kills it. To graft a Christian into the world is to kill his testimony and his influence. You know, when the Christian hooks up with the world, when the dough starts to influence the yeast more than the yeast influences the dough, it injures our service for Christ. Number eight, the palm tree will not burn. You know, they can't use a palm tree for firewood because it refuses to burn like ordinary wood. In the same way, a child of God will never ever for, for a moment suffer the fires of hell. He will never burn. He is a palm tree. And lastly, the palm tree is an evergreen. The evergreen is a symbol of immortality. I need to tell you today, the child of God will never die. He or she has everlasting life. Verse 12 tells us, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Now, I'll be careful here. Because 21st century has a definition of what it is to be righteous. We try and be good. You know, you don't become righteous by coming to church, going to Bible study, reading the Bible, praying. The righteousness that talks about here is Christ's righteousness. I have no righteousness of my own. But it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And when it says the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, it is Christ that is living in us, which allows us to flourish like a palm tree. And that's a whole sermon there already. But we still have the cedars of Lebanon. It's the national symbol. It's on the flag of Lebanon. They're known because they go from height to height. We go from strength to strength, faith to faith, glory to glory. And that is my heart for this church. The word cedar actually means strong and firmly rooted. They often grow up to 40 feet in circumference. The psalmist is saying that we who are righteous will grow in an incredible fashion. Now please notice four things about the cedar tree. Not, not nine this time. Four things about the cedar trees. Number one. The cedar tree grows downwards. The cedar sends its taproot deep. It seeks hidden springs and wraps around rocks for anchorage. Paul urged the Ephesian church to be rooted and grounded in love. And there are three uses of a root. One, it is necessary for the life of a plant. Two, it carries nourishment up to the plant. And thirdly, it keeps the plant in its place. Church, we are not 
alive. We are not fully alive until we are united in Christ. And can I say if there's anyone here today, you know, who knows about Jesus, but doesn't know Jesus, is not united with him, can I encourage you to get united? We need nourishment from Jesus to grow and to endure. And in fact, I want to tell you this. If you want to go further, you have to go deeper. Secondly, the cedar tree grows upwards. Cedars can grow to a height of 120 to 150 feet. And for me, that's a wonderful picture of the way that we, as Christians, we walk upon the earth. We are Christ's hands and feet upon the earth. But our heads should be above the clouds. Thirdly, the cedar tree grows outwards. Now as a rule, the cedar tree starts at about 9 or 10 feet from the ground and then what happens is the branches grow out horizontally and they become very widespreading. Stretching out as they do, they provide shade and shelter from the elements. They possess a, a certain beauty that is unmatched as they stand majestically against the sky. Which leads me to a thought. Should not our lives reach out like branches to touch the lives of others? Now, in the first year, the cones of the cedar tree are pale green. They look like they're no use at all. In the second year, they are browner, and they're about, about three inches across. But in the third year, they become dark brown and open up to release seeds. I want to speak into that picture. I want to speak into that over you today because there are a number of us in ministry. You know, we try something new. We try something new for God. Six months down the line, oh, nothing's happening. In the third year, they open and they release seeds. And I speak this word over Lighthouse Church and over you today. That you will grow, that you will mature, that you will open up and that you will release seeds. And those seeds will be widespread. Many of us here today are not you know, we, we come from a different country. We probably will be going back to another country someday. Look at those cones. Look at those seeds. And let's not think of lighthouse churches as, as the people who are gathered here today. That's part of it. When I think of the Vine Church, I think about all the seeds that are planted all over the world. One of the beauties about Hong Kong is that people come and people go. We can get depressed about that. <laughs> oh, no, they're going. Or we can look at it. But we're going to release seeds. And the Lighthouse Church today is all over the world. Yes. Fourthly, cedars grow onwards. They are noted for their longevity. There are some around today that have been around over 2,000 years. Think of this. There are cedar trees on the earth today that were on the earth when Jesus walked the earth. That's a long time. This suggests the immortality of the righteous. The cedar is a perennial evergreen. Likewise, a Christian is instant in season and out of season. It has remarkable, lasting qualities. Have a look again at your Old Testament. Solomon used cedar trees to build the temple. Can I just stop there? This is, this is great. Okay. So Old Testament, Solomon 
used cedar trees to build the physical temple. 2015, Christ is using the righteous to build his church. Wow. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Our new season at the Vine, um, we, our, we're talking about growing big people. And I want to look at a few words here from, from Paul in Ephesians 3. It picks up what we've been talking about. When he says to the church in Ephesus, I pray that you being rooted and established in life may have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I can think of no picture to illustrate these verses better than the cedar tree. I believe this. That you as a church, lighthouse church, are to be like a cedar to grow downwards and draw your nourishment from Christ. I believe that you are to grow upward as you keep your spiritual eyes on eternity. I believe you are to grow outward as you seek to touch others with your faith. And I believe you are to grow onward with the lasting qualities of Christ. I want to return to the specific word I have for you, which represents my heart for you. That you would be planted and that you would flourish. And I have two, two thoughts. Number one, a seed cannot grow to its potential unless it is planted. Sitting on top of a soil won't do it. Church, Christ followers cannot grow to their potential unless they are planted in church and not just attending. The second thing, the decisions that you make will determine whether your life can flourish or not. A flourishing life is a blessed life. The prophet Jeremiah in the midst is speaking, look, if you want to get depressed one day, Go home and read Jeremiah 17. <laughs> it is the most depressing chapter in the Bible. He's talking about the sin of the nature of Judah. He's talking about the punishment and the curses that would follow their disobedience. And right in the middle of it is a word of encouragement for the righteous. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence in Him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. I believe he's echoing the song and the sentiments of the psalmist in Psalm 92. Jeremiah likens a blessed life to a tree planted by waters. Something that flourishes is alive, healthy, and growing. Jeremiah draws a clear contrast between a person who trusts in the Lord and one who does not. And as I finish today, I want to be direct with you. I can be direct because I'm not coming back next week, okay? So I can, I can say what I like. I want to ask you some questions. Number one, are you planted? What I mean is, do you attend church or are you planted here? People who, who are planted don't just attend church, but they are fruitful. Their life is making a difference for the kingdom of God. They understand that God has called them to be fruitful followers of Christ and not just faithful attenders to church. And people who are planted in the house of the Lord stay fresh. In other words, they stay on fire for God. Look, there's nothing worse than a dried up, stale, rusty, ze no zeal, lukewarm Christian. God hasn't called us to get dried up and stale, but to stay fresh and green. 
and you know how we catch on fire and stay on fire for God, we must be planted in the house of the Lord. My second question, are you easily uprooted? Man, sometimes I think people in Hong Kong change their churches more often than they change their underwear. <sighs> you know, if you constantly uproot and replant a tree, it won't be long before the tree begins to wither and die. It's important to be connected with others in your church and to invest your time and your energy there, putting your roots down deep. My third question is, can you handle the weather? Yeah, it's pretty pertinent during summer in Hong Kong, isn't it? But are you resilient through good times and bad? Oh, it's easy to get excited for the church when everything's going well. We have a few problems. Are you resilient? Or do you have a tendency to uproot and run away from challenges? Being planted, I believe, is the first step in flourishing. It's not difficult to recognize a flourishing tree. Its roots are being planted in good soil. And can I just say to you today, this is good soil. This church is good soil. With signs of growth, healthy foliage, fruit, and flowers and seeds are in abundance. We even had a, seed, uh, a flower during the drama, didn't we? <laughs> a fruitful life is the result of sowing good seed into healthy soil. So how do you know if you are sowing your life into something that will prove fruitful and productive on the scale of eternity? Two questions. My fourth question. What am I sowing my life into? Your priorities reflect your values. We saw that in the sketch. Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Jesus made it clear that even he is sowing into his church and not even hell itself can come against it. I say to you today, make God's house a priority and you will build your life on an unshakable foundation. When you do, it will also position what you sow your life into in other things like family, friendship, integrity, generosity. And my last question is a personal one. Is the soil of my life healthy? To live a flourishing life, we must all continue, and we never ever get there. We need to continue to do this to confront attitudes and mindsets that pull us away from the purposes of God. For example, selfishness, unforgiveness, unbelief, and fear will sap the God life from you. I need to tell you today that God is here. He is ready. He is willing. He is able to help us confront these internal challenges. Church, submit yourself to him and his word and resist the work of the enemy in your life. And your life will begin to flourish. Church should be an environment where people can grow and flourish in life. A flourishing church is not built on the gifts of a few. It's not about your pastors and the leaders. It is about the sacrifices of many. Those who are planted in God's house and share the load constitute the healthy soul of a church. And my final statement to you is this. Your commitment...
Your contribution to this fellowship not only helps you to thrive, but it causes this church and the church as a whole to flourish. That's my heart for you. Happy anniversary.